Hi friends, uh, this is a video on valvular heart diseases. Uh, we are going to see some basic aspects related to the valvular heart diseases so that uh, at the first MBBS level, if there is a short note, uh, you will be able to write the answer or maybe as a clinical application in the question of cardiac cycle. So let's start with the basics. What is the function of a valve? Uh, valve, when it is open, it allows the blood to flow in one particular direction and when the valve is closed it prevents the back flow of blood uh, flow of blood in the opposite direction so that's the function of a valve allow the unidirectional blood flow or allow the blood to flow in one direction but not allow the blood to go in the opposite direction let's take an example uh, let's say av valves in the heart uh, when the atrial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure, the AV valves will be open and the blood will flow uh, from atria to ventricles. After all, blood knows only one thing, that is to flow from high to low pressure. So, uh, AV valves will open and blood will go into the uh, from atria to ventricles. But as long as the ventricular pressure is more than the atrial pressure, the AV valves will remain closed so as to prevent the blood going back uh, into the atria. So that's the function of these valves in the heart. With that in mind, now let's see the valvular heart diseases. There are two types of uh, valvular heart diseases. A. Stenosis. B. Regurgitation. Regurgitant valve, previously also called as incompetent valve. So, let's see what these uh, conditions are. Stenosis means uh, the valve leaflets, they adhere to each other. So, that when the valve is supposed to be open, those, uh, those leaflets, they adhere to each other. So, they are not opening properly. And valve orifice opening is narrowed. And the blood has to go through that narrowed opening. So, it does not allow the normal blood flow uh, through uh, from one chamber to the other when the valve is supposed to be open and uh, that's a stenosis. So, what you should remember these two things valve leaflets kind of adhere to each other and the valve orifice opening is narrowed and the blood has to go through that narrowed opening when the valve is supposed to be open in that point of time in the cardiac cycle. And the second one is regurgitant valve. So, the other function of the valve, that is, it's supposed to close and prevent the backflow of blood, that does not happen in the condition of regurgitation. That is, uh, it when the valve is regurgitant or incompetent, when it is supposed to be closed, it does not close properly and therefore, it allows the blood to flow in the opposite direction. It does, allows the regurgitation, backflow of blood in the previous chamber. So, uh, that is how the diseases can be categorized. Stenosis, when the valve is supposed to be open, it is not able to perform its function properly. Regurgitation, when the valve is supposed to be shut, closed, it is not able to perform its uh, function properly. That is regurgitation or incompetent incompetence or uh, incompetent valve. Now, let's see the consequences of these uh, conditions. Let's take the example of mitral stenosis. Mitral valve between left atrium and left ventricle and let's say it is stenosed. So, uh, the opening, the orifice is narrowed. Now, what happens is Stenosis, the conditions of stenosis result in what is called as pressure hypertrophy. Pressure hypertrophy of the chamber which is behind the valve. So, in the case of mitral stenosis, for example, a mitral valve, its orifice is narrowed, it does not open properly and therefore, the chamber behind it, that is left atrium, has to exert extra force. It has to apply extra pressure for the blood to go uh, through the mitral, uh, stenosed mitral valve. 
and because of this high pressure situation eventually there will be left atrial hypertrophy so this is called as pressure hypertrophy and in the conditions of stenosis uh, it results in what is called as pressure hypertrophy of the chamber which is behind the valve so uh, in the case of mitral stenosis for example as i mentioned uh, the, there will be left atrial hypertrophy because it's the job of left atrium to send the blood through the mitral valve and if mitral valve is stenosed then there is a pressure burden on the left atrium and its musculature uh, increases in size which is called as hypertrophy hypertrophy is increase in the cell size as you know so pressure hypertrophy it's a pressure overload in the case of regurgitant valves uh, what results is called as volume overload let's understand this let's say uh, left ventricle ejects the blood into the aorta through the aortic valve now consider there is aortic regurgitation aortic valve incompetent so during systole left ventricle will eject the blood into the aorta and at the end of the systole aortic valve is supposed to close so that there is no backflow of blood from aorta back into the left ventricle right that's the normal physiology but imagine that the aortic valve is incompetent aortic regurgitation condition what will happen at the end of systole when the left ventricle goes in diastole uh, aortic valve cannot shut properly cannot close properly so the blood from the aorta will go back into the left ventricle there will be regurgitation of blood back into the left ventricle now imagine that left ventricle is already going to receive the blood from the left atrium and this kind of extra blood regurgitating backward from the aorta back into the left ventricle which means what which means left ventricle will be filled with extra amount of blood volume and because of this kind of extra blood volume getting filled chronically in that chamber the chamber behind the incompetent valve will become hypertrophied but this time we, we, we call it volume hypertrophy there is extra volume getting filled chronically in that chamber so chamber behind the incompetent valve uh, gets hypertrophied we call it volume hypertrophy so what uh, you got to remember is stenosis results in the pressure uh, hypertrophy and regurgitation results in what is called as volume hypertrophy and hypertrophy of which chamber the chamber behind the valve all right so uh, that was about uh, the uh, diseases valvular heart diseases let me just add here what is the clinical consequence of the valvular heart disease uh, how do you recognize it the valvular heart disease that there will be presence of an adventitious sound called as murmur so murmurs are the adventitious foreign heart sounds foreign sounds uh, due to the uh, conditions of the valve or uh, uh, valvular heart disease now what happens which results in the murmur uh, imagine again mitral stenosis valve orifice is narrowed and the blood has to go through that narrowed orifice so what happens is because the blood has to go through the narrowed uh, orifice of the valve narrowed opening of the valve there is turbulence in this blood and this turbulence of the blood as it goes through the uh, stenosed valve this turbulence results in a sound uh, which is called as murmur so uh, murmurs are produced because of the turbulent blood flow through a stenosed valve i mean we have taken just an example of mitral stenosis here it's important to determine determine the timing of uh, the murmur whether the murmur is occurring in systole or it is in diastole because that will give you the pointer as to uh, which valve is involved so uh, you know how do you recognize the systole and diastole in the heart 
with the help of uh, corresponding with the carotid pulse. I mean the sound that comes with the carotid pulse is the first heart sound and immediately after the first heart sound there is systole. So uh, if the murmur is occurring after the first heart sound then it's called as a systolic murmur and then uh, the second heart sound occurs between the two carotid pulsations. So you know this is the second heart sound and the murmur that occurs after the second heart sound will be the diastolic murmur. So that is how you recognize the timing of uh, the particular murmur and then from that you get the pointer towards the involvement of a particular valve. For example, mitral stenosis, in the condition of mitral stenosis, there will be mid diastolic murmur. Now, uh, why there is diastolic murmur in mitral stenosis? It's simply because when does the blood flow through the mitral valve? It is during the diastole. When the diastole happens, uh, ventricular diastole, mitral valve is supposed to open and the blood is supposed to go through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. So, uh, obviously, as the blood is going uh, through the stenosed mitral valve, it will create the murmur. Murmur will be produced and of course, that will be uh, during the diastole. So, from the timing of the murmur, we get to know about uh, the involvement of a particular valve. So, this in a, in a summary was uh, about the valvular heart diseases.